Hey everybody, Charles Woods here. I have found out something about measurement in ZBrush. It's been really vexing me because I do a lot of work with um, rapid prototyping for miniatures and collectibles and stuff. And um, it's one thing that's always kind of pissed me off about ZBrush is that there's no obvious unit system or way of, of measuring things. And I know uh, that the ZBrush docs will tell you about the transposed units and setting this to like scale like heads and that kind of stuff, but I want millimeters, you know? So I found something out. Um, ZBrush converts uh, meters to millimeters, and I'll show you what I mean. This is a one meter cube, and if I go to the move transpose line and drag out a transpose line from vertex to vertex on this, you'll see that it reads as one unit. And if I do come back down here, you'll see that the unit scale is 1 and the calibration distance is 1. So this is like the default ZBrush world space, world view, 1, 1, 1. If I come over to the Z plugin and I go to 3D print exporter, update my size ratios and come over to millimeters, click update size ratios again, you can see that I, this, this cube is exactly 1 mil on X, Y, and Z. So this is good news. That means that uh, I do, in fact, have a one millimeter cube. And to prove that to you that this is a one hundredth percentage uh, reduction, this is the cube that I created. Uh, this is in Modo, and uh, it is a one meter unit cube. If I go to View, da, 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 Dimensions tool, you can I can prove that to you. You can see this is one meter on a side. And I believe Maya is the same way, uh, but I haven't checked that. Um, I will just double check it, but I, I'm pretty confident that uh, you'll find the same thing happens with a, uh, with a Maya export. Uh, so you say, oh, that's great, Charles. You figured out a one, a one millimeter uh, unit. That's great. So how can I use that? Well, you can uh, do one of two things. You can do your rough block in work uh, in Maya or Moto, Max, whatever, uh, using meters for millimeters. Um, or you can uh, work in millimeters off the bat in ZBrush. And ZBrush doesn't really make this obvious to you. If you go to uh, the floor, the grid, for example, this is the default grid that, uh, that pops up. And as you can see, it doesn't really have much lining up with a, with a one millimeter cube. Um, if I go to draw and look at the defaults here, uh, in fact, I believe the default for this is negative one um, for the elevation. But if I go to draw, you see the grid size by default is set at three. Why? I don't know. Tile seven, why? I don't know. Let's change this to 1 for the grid size and 10 for the tiles. And then take a look at our grid. Well, this starts to make a lot more sense now. Uh, you can see that this is each one of these little tick marks then is 1 tenth of 1 millimeter. Um, and I found by playing around with the settings here that if I go to the grid size and make it 100, Follow me now, 100 for the grid size and 50 for the tiles. Each one of these grid units is one millimeter. So now the ZBrush um, floor planes are in fact on a millimeter scale. So you can now use these uh, for eyeballing distance in millimeters much, much easier. Um, I prove this another way. I created a uh, generic setup scene with a, uh, let me put this elevation at zero, get this floor back in the middle of the world. I created a default setup scene, like I want this guy to have a 20, 20 millimeter eye line, right? So with some headgear or something, he's exactly one inch tall or 25.4 millimeters tall. Um, you know, miniatures, right? So in the base, I wanted the base to be a half inch or 12.7 millimeters. Um, the uh, gnomon sticks in here. Each one of these guys is a uh, is a millimeter for each of the ticks, and then I've got colors every five 
uh, so I can go 5, 10, 15, 20, just real quick and an eyeball on it. Uh, but regardless, anyway, I'm starting to ramble. The uh, point being, let me turn that stick off, uh, without the rulers, if I look at this base and I come up to my move tool, turn off the X symmetry. Now, if I pick a point here and drag over to the other side, you can see that this base is 12.7074 units on my on my ruler so it's I mean it's that's it I was so excited to find this out because you know now you can you can work with your with your grids and actually have them mean something to you I mean I, and I appreciate that Pixelogic is has done this artistic thing where they don't rely so much on real world measurements and everything like that but Gosh, for I mean, for for the the basis of uh, rapid prototyping, which ZBrush is being used more and more for these days, you got to have a good idea of how thick something is, or you know how tall something is at the minimum. So now, if I come back to my uh, 3D print exporter, and I uh, go to set selected subtool size, I get this base selected. I mean, just just to prove this here. Uh, I'll update the size ratio on inches, click it over to millimeters and update the size ratios. Here we go. This thing is 12.7 millimeters on X, 1.34 millimeters on Y, and 12.7 millimeters on Z. So uh, I have every faith and confidence now that this figure, when I work on him and, uh, and I go to output it, I won't have to do any funky business like selecting a subtool and setting the size here for all the tools and all that kind of stuff. I'm working at the size that I want to work at, which is, a, you know, a, as an artist, is kind of a good feeling to know uh, that you're in the ballpark. You know, that you're that you're where you're supposed to be, and you're not working on a guy that is uh, 200 meters tall instead of 20 millimeters tall. You know, it, I will say this though, working uh, in this quote-unquote real scale, uh, ZBrush will do some kind of funny things with its tools and everything because you are working much larger than it's than it's used to working I guess or what, what you what you think it would be working at um, like for example if I come to a default polymesh 3d here he is way down here at the center of the uh, of the ZBrush universe um, I haven't noticed any real issues with like Dynamesh or brushes walking out or anything but you'll you'll see what I mean if you try this uh, working at scale in ZBrush uh, you'll have some little oddities I guess the brushes seem to be smoother overall uh, and that makes sense because they're getting a lot of steps for a for a, a stroke um, but anyway I hope that this has been informative to you I know that uh, I've taken up a lot of time with it but it was it was really important to me to be able to figure out some sense of scale in ZBrush. So now I know that I can, you know, do initial design work in Maya or Moto uh, in the meters scale and be able to translate that directly into ZBrush and know what I'm getting uh, for my detailing pass. Or I can start right in ZBrush and know that with my draw settings for the grid at a grid size of 150 tiles, that that grid is equaling one unit for one millimeter. Thanks, I hope it's been informative. Have a good one.